you know, mm-hmm. and just mechanically like um, reverse engineering it. Yeah, so you back engineer the move. I saw the Mikey lock too. That's very interesting. That's a really interesting leg lock. I watched yeah. you uh, demonstrate that, and I was noticing there was a lot of people that were like legit black belts that were like, oh shit. Like, that really works. Like, there's something to that. Yeah, using your neck instead of your armpit. Yeah, it's kind of wild. It's just so interesting how in jiu-jitsu we could alter positions with our body, you know, and just instead, like a heel hook, so people understand, is using your armpit. So uh, what I figured out was using my neck instead of my armpit, which is also like a pit, Mm -hmm. and then it's the same efficiency as a heel hook. Yeah, and it really works. Yeah, yeah. And you just invented that. Yeah. I was training and just figuring out different uh, ways to control the the foot to get to a heel hook. And then people started tapping when I was doing this. And I didn't even know I had a submission. And then I was like, oh, my God. And then that became a submission. <laughs> wow. That's pretty wild. Have you done that with other moves? Um, that's typically how it happens. Um, I'll be training and then I'll subconsciously do something, a movement. And then I'll be like, what just happened? And then we'll break down what I did, and then we'll discover positions. You know, it's creativity. Jiu-Jitsu is an art, right? Yeah. So there's a form of creativity to it and discovering things in the art. It really is an art, and it's an art that is very much appreciated by people who practice the art, and it's kind of hard for people who don't practice the art to appreciate it because they don't understand it. When I first started doing commentary for the UFC, one of the biggest challenges was explaining jujitsu in a digestible way. Like when I would, when the fight would go to the ground, a lot of times people would boo or like they didn't know what was going on. And so it was my job to try to explain the progression and like, okay, now he's got to clear the right arm. Now he's in trouble. And then I would like talk people through right up into the submission, right up into the person taps. So they would go, oh, I see. So it made jujitsu more digestible to them and more exciting because they, instead of just like seeing a bunch of legs and arms all yeah. tangled up, they got to see what the person was trying to accomplish. Yeah, like um, even my friends that started jujitsu, they all start, they're like, oh, I want to do UFC or MMA. And then they go to the gym and they look at the jujitsu stuff. They're like, no. And they'll do Muay Thai, right? And then they'll just keep seeing the jujitsu class. And then one day they'll try jujitsu one time. And then they switch to just jiu-jitsu, no Muay Thai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's it protects you uh, from brain damage too. The the thing about the problem with Muay Thai and all so these much other impact. Things, it's a lot of impact. Even if you're just sparring light, you're you're still getting touched. You're still getting thumped in the head. Yeah. Do you have any desire at all to ever fight MMA? So I did Muay Thai for seven years as a kid. Yeah. So I love Muay Thai. I think it's awesome. Um, and I'm in Evolve right now, which has like the best Muay Thai program in the world. So I'm interested in it, you know, and maybe in the future if I keep learning. But, again, brain damage sucks. Yeah. But if I could take minimal damage, I don't know. But the problem is, like, can you? Is it possible to take minimal? I think about running into someone who's as good at striking as you are at jiu-jitsu. So you're going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, think yeah. about, like, how much you can control people. Like, I first saw you in Who's Number One. Uh, who was the bald guy uh, Marcel Cohen. That's right, Marcel Cohen. And uh, I made a bet, and I bet on you. It was me and Lex Friedman. Oh Lex God. Friedman bet on Marcelo. I bet on you, and I won. Ha ha, Lex. <laughs> but uh, you, you, you. When I was watching your technique, I was like, this guy is super advanced. Like this is really interesting. Thank you. And you were setting him up like the entire time. Like there was so many times. It's almost like you were like allowing him to put you back in half guard and moving back to mount. I'm like, he is like setting up something very specific. And then when you had the opportunity for the triangle, you took it. Yeah. I'm always baiting my partner to give me certain reactions so Mm -hmm. I can do the move, you know? Right. And um, that's what's so beautiful about you too, how we could set things up and bait them to give us something. Yeah. You know? The problem with you going into MMA is like you could find someone who's like that, but with striking. Yeah. Like like style vendor. Like someone who's like of that, course. who's like setting you up. And then, you know. But just learning a new skill is yes. so awesome. And um, that's what I love learning, you know. Oh, it's probably.